Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Retrogate Entropy. Um, I'll show you my shirt real quick because I'm sure somebody will be wondering what that says. There you go. Eat, sleep, game, and work. Um, <clears throat> which is pretty much my entire life except without the work part at the moment. Although I am working on getting better, so I guess that <clears throat> technically still does count. So, yesterday was the no computer day, and it... Um, it both succeeded and failed spectacularly. So <clears throat> let me let me sort of go through it. So basically what happened was I started up in the morning. I had like a few minutes on the I iPhone doing some gaming stuff. It's only like two or three minutes. I didn't want to do any at first, but I sort of pushed myself. I said, all right, I'll do it two or three minutes. It's not going to really affect anything. <clears throat> And then it was basically just no screens at all. So no computer after I put my video up. Um, no TV whatsoever. So basically I sat in the lounge room and in the dining room. Did some reading in the lounge room. Um, puzzles in the dining room. And that's I just bounced between those two with a little bit of music for <clears throat> quite a few hours actually. I did go out for a walk at like 10 o'clock. But it was a bit cold so that was not too much fun. But the interesting thing is, I was starting to get tired. <clears throat> so I was starting to get tired. Um, by about 10 o'clock, I was feeling very lethargic from... I didn't know why at, the po at that point, but I was feeling very lethargic. So I went out for a walk. It was a bit cold. I figured it would wake me up. I came back, it didn't really wake me up. So I kept doing puzzles, kept doing books. Um, <clears throat> around 11.30, I was feeling very lethargic. I was feeling just bad, just plain bad. <coughs> and I didn't know why, I didn't understand it because my entire hypothesis behind no computer was that I would feel less tired because, you know, less screens, no screens. So the fact that I was actually more tired was completely 180, it was completely opposite of what I thought would happen. <coughs> so I developed a new hypothesis, which is that boredom equals fatigue. And I did a quick look up on the phone and there was at least one article I found which supported that where boredom makes you tired. So I thought, okay, so I'm, I'm bored. I need some, I need some, what's, the, what's that word again? I had that word like a minute ago. Intellectual stimulation is what I was missing. So board games, books, even music wasn't giving me enough intellectual stimulation. So 11.30, um, <clears throat> I thought about just continuing for the rest of the day, make it a proper scientific experiment, but I was feeling terrible at that point, just so lethargic. I was like, screw this, I don't want to do this the rest of the day, and I'm probably going to feel like shit tomorrow if I do. So I went <clears throat> straight into the computer where I'm sitting right now. I got my I um I got my phone open, started playing Clash of Clans, and put a video on at the same time. So I had a video on the computer, and I was playing Clash of Clans. <clears throat> 11.45, literally 15 minutes later, I was feeling better. Um, so that, as far as I'm concerned, is a successful is a successful failure, I suppose you could say. <clears throat> I didn't prove what I was expecting to prove, but I proved something else. And I'm, I'm definitely going to say this is breakthrough number two. So breakthrough number one happened on like day eight or something, and that was getting the fresh air and moving into the south facing room so you could get fresh air during the day <clears throat> that was breakthrough number one this is breakthrough number two so <clears throat> as far as screens go as far as screens making me tired that has not been disproven and i think that is still a thing i think i've always known that screens make you tired if you sit in front of them for too long um <clears throat> And I think that's still the uh, still a fact. Like that's a cold hard fact. Screens do make you tired, but the opposite, no screens at all, for me at least, doesn't make me less tired because we've got this additional factor which wasn't taken into consideration. <clears throat> that while screens make you tired, a lack of intellectual stimulation makes you even more tired. Like so, that's so. While it seems like screens are bad, the things that stimulate me most, which actually get me energized, are the computer, are the phone, is, is the phone, sorry, and to a lesser degree is the TV. So, 
So I, I will keep using those. I'll keep doing those. I'll keep doing that stuff because it intellectually stimulates me and thus prevents me from getting fatigued like I did yesterday. <clears throat> so we still have the problem with the screens, absolutely. But at least now we know that just cutting out all screens entirely is a very, very bad idea. So <clears throat> it's kind of a bit more that I could go into about this. So I, I suppose I will. Um, <clears throat> although I am getting a little bit of a cough, but it's probably because it's still too early or I don't know. I got the heater on. I don't know what's going on. So anyway, let's let's have a little bit of a drink and see if that fixes it. Hmm. <clears throat> Maybe. <clears throat> so let me kind of um, analyze the screen use a little bit. <clears throat> now that we know that it's still a problem, but it's not one we can completely eliminate. So we have to kind of break it down. So I think as far as screens go, <clears throat> there's four things that sort of identify what sort of problem there is. So uh, four characteristics. So you've got the size of the screen. You've got the distance you are from the screen, you've got the brightness of the screen, and you've got the actual content on the screen. <clears throat> so size and distance are fairly obvious. If you've got a big screen that's close to you, it'll tire you out more quickly. If you've got a big screen that's far away, or you've got a tiny little screen, it won't tire you out as fast. It'll tire you out a lot slower. <clears throat> brightness as well. Obviously, if the screen is brighter, then it'll tire you out more. And there's also um, something to do with the particular colours. I think um, blue light, I believe it's blue light, ties you out more. So I've actually got a little program called Flux, um, F-L-U-X, that I'm running on my computer. Um, and that artificially tones down the blue light. <clears throat> you can actually see, um, it's a bit hard to see in these glasses, they're reflecting the monitors, but you can see they're reflecting, when they reflect, it's like blue. Um, so these are actually blue light. They got a bit of a blue light filter on the glasses themselves. So um, <clears throat> that's something that the optometrist specifically put on the glasses for, not specifically for chronic fatigue, but just for like light sensitivity, because a lot of the light sensitive is blue light. So this filters out <clears throat> a fair bit of the blue light, which I think is why in the reflection, off the glasses, which you can kind of see in the video, you're seeing all the monitors as blue, uh, something like that. So anyway, um, but you can also get a program called Flux on your computer. <coughs> that filters out the blue light and actually t automatically tones down the brightness of your monitors when it's early in the morning or late at night. So you don't have ultra bright monitors when you're about to go to bed, which you should never use your computer when you're about to go to bed anyway. Um, <coughs> I think early in the morning, it doesn't matter too much. It's obviously if you've got something like Flux or you've got this. This is my, um, it's a Samsung S10 and it actually has light settings where it'll only be as bright as the room needs it to be. <clears throat> so when I wake up and my room's dead dark and I turn on the phone, it's not full brightness. It's actually pretty dim, but it's enough to see because it's a pitch black room. So that's beautiful. If it went to full brightness as soon as I opened it up, that would probably cause problems, but... Um, <clears throat> and my old phone actually did that, which I think did cause problems. But this phone, because it's, um, detects brightness based on the room brightness and then changes it accordingly, this is fine. This doesn't cause me problems early in the morning or late in the evening, but <clears throat> definitely late in the evening, I think I need to cut down on other f forms like watching videos or watching movies on the TV, watching YouTube videos like an hour before bed, I think is a bad idea, which needs to be cut out. But I think, I think I've think i known that forever, so that's not, <clears throat> that's not new information. So the other thing, the fourth thing, is the content on the thing. And basically when it comes to content, it's <clears throat> um, movement. It's how many things, different things are happening, right? Right now I'm looking at the screen, I'm looking back at myself, and the background is pretty much just nothing happening and it's just my head talking. So my mouth is really the only thing that's moving on the screen. <clears throat> so it's a very low amount of movement. So what I'm saying is if I'm playing a game, then playing something like SimCity will not tire me out a lot. Playing a first person shooter will tire me out a lot more because the whole screen, everything on the screen 
will be constantly changing, constantly shifting around. SimCity, unless you're scrolling from one side of the map to the other, not a lot's going to change. So that's why I actually, a lot of the games I do cast on YouTube <coughs> are simulation games because they don't change a lot. Um, so it's a lot easier. It less, makes me less tired. I haven't cast a first-person shooter forever because it it's a lot heavier on the hands as well, so it screws up your tendonitis, but... Or my tendonitis, anyway. So that's another reason why I don't play those, but I think if I did, then they would probably um, <coughs> cause a lot more fatigue as well. So that's fine. So the movies... Um, <coughs> movies, obviously, it's big, but it's far away. It's not that bright, and... A lot of stuff does change. So the movies are okay on the TV, but if I watch them late in the evening when I'm just about to go to bed, that's definitely a bad thing. <coughs> so yeah, got to cut that out. Um, yeah, so that's that's basically it as far as my uh, no computer day went. Uh, learnt, learnt a lot. Definitely that counts as a breakthrough. So <coughs> it's, it's good. Because I mean, because it means I don't have to give up computer. Because I love computer, I love playing my phone, and now the uh, the science um, supports me actually continuing those. If the best way to cure myself of chronic fatigue was to completely give up computer and phone, that would have sucked. That would have really sucked. Because I I got to cure myself. I got to get cured, and I got a time limit. So that would have sucked. I would it would have become very hard. But it, it worked out in my favour, I guess. <clears throat> it still kind of does suck because I was hoping for a, an easy win, another easy win, like fresh air was an easy win. No computer would have been another easy win. It could have propelled my curing process really, really high. Doesn't look like that's going to do that. <clears throat> Unless I somehow find something that's intellectually stimulating that's not a computer. And I've been trying for years to do that. I've tried so many things like books puzzles, um, puzzle books, <laughs> you know, those little logic puzzles and su Sudoku and all that sort of stuff. I think I've kind of um, been playing computer games for so long that that's kind of where I'm stuck as far as being intellectually stimulated. So I could wean myself off it slowly, but I just love computer games so much that <clears throat> I doubt I could do that. And it would be a tough process. It's not the sort of thing I want to do when I'm supposed to be getting better because it might actually send me backwards. It might take me a month to get to the point where I'm, my intellectual stimulation is no longer computers. It might even take me longer. <clears throat> it might take me ages. Um, and all the while, I'd be feeling... Like, I, I swear to God, yesterday, 11.30, after doing no computer and no phone for like uh, just the morning... I felt so terrible, so lethargic. It was unbelievable. So that absolutely not going to be what I do. <clears throat> so my my current plan, though, my next stage is going to be exercising. So there's the exercise machine there. Um, I've already I've already been doing walks, as you know. I'm going to start pushing that a bit harder um, to get more walks out. And the weather's still crap for a lot of the days, but there's supposed to be a 27 next Wednesday. So that's what I'm looking forward to. If it starts to be continuously in the 20s, which hopefully it will be for the rest of October and then November, December, <clears throat> that'll be a lot of outside stuff that I can do. And my aim is to get my fitness up so that I can do longer walks, maybe three, four walks a day, something like that. Longer walks, because right now I have started to reach the point where <clears throat> I start to feel sore after two walks a day, like my muscles start to feel a bit sore. And at a our uh, shoulders are a bit funny at the moment. Our back was a bit funny yesterday. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, get my fitness. I've already got upper body fitness because tendonitis. So I have to stretch and work out of those every morning. So it's just lower body. Um, so the legs mainly. So <clears throat> if I stretch and do a bit of cardio every morning, I did a minute this morning. I stretched and then I did a minute, which I which felt fine. It didn't feel like I was pushing myself. So I guess all this walking has sort of toned me up a little bit. So I'll start with a minute um, and keep pushing that up gradually and keep trying to get more walks in. Get my physical ability going because <clears throat> I think as long as I stay intellectually stimulated, then I feel a bit more energized and then I can go and do more walks and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> one thing I do want to cut down though, though is 
watching the YouTube. I think out of the four things I do, the computer games, the phone games, the movie, and the YouTube videos, I think the YouTube videos needs to be cut down. Because right now, if I do that for a few hours, it's not only is it less intellectually stimulating than playing computer games, but it's also generally the screen is changing a lot more often. There's a lot, there's a video, a lot more things are happening. And I'm sitting so close to the computer. I could sit back a little bit, <clears throat> but that's hard with the keyboard being where it is and all that sort of stuff, and I don't really want. So I think I need to cut down on that. And that's where I need to do stuff like reading and puzzles in the background. So I hit the computer games and I hit the phone. So I hit the computer games nice and hard for like a couple of day, a couple of hours a day, maybe three hours, something like that. Intellectually stimulating. And then I take breaks. And the breaks are currently movies and I'd what and in those breaks I'd also want to do yes less YouTube videos and more puzzles and books. Because I think I should do more of them, you know, consistently. But I still want the computer games in between. So I get a, a constant up-down sort of cycle. And I've got the iPhone games sort of 15 minutes, 10 minutes here and there across the entire day. Which is little bits of intellectual stimulation. So that's nice. <clears throat> I definitely don't feel like this screen, this little screen, is causing me any fatigue in terms of brightness. Um, except if I... Even when I do it right before bed, like the computer makes me tired right before bed, the TV makes me tired right before bed, this, the phone doesn't. I think that's the most benign out of all of the screens which have the potential to make me tired. And the games I play, the screen doesn't change quite a lot anyway. It's not like watching a movie. So that's, that's pretty fine. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I'm going to continue doing that. And I'm going to continue pushing my physical fitness, trying to get more walks in. Hopefully the weather improves and I can really start to push it. Um, start to walk more often, start to go further, start to have this window open a lot more. It's like a top of like 16 today, 14 or something. It's stupid. I'm not going to be able to have the window open at all today. And I may, I may be able to walk, but walking around if there's like 10 degrees or 13 degrees, that's the sort of stupid thing that can get you sick, especially if the wind's blowing. So I might even, I don't want to skip that, but who knows? Who knows? I don't want to exercise more either because that's I'm not getting the fresh air. I really the fresh air is the main thing that I want to get. But yeah, I might just have to call it today. I, I hate it's the middle of spring and you're still getting these shitty days. It's really annoying me. But anyway, <clears throat> that's my plan. So mitigate the computer things that are that are you looking at a big screen but not as intellectually stimulating. So try and focus all the computer stuff and the phone stuff on intellectually stimulating stuff. Maybe get back into the programming because I've done a couple of programming videos. So maybe get back into those because they're really stimulating. Um, and try and reduce stuff like just sitting back and just watching YouTube videos for a few hours. Replace those with puzzles and books. Get it more of a balanced diet, I guess, in terms of activity. And start pushing the physical activity. Start getting the exercise bike up and going on a daily basis, which I didn't want to do because I didn't want it to impact the no computer experiment. But that's over with. So get the exercise going up. Try and push the walking as much as possible. Try and get the physical activity up. Um, other than that, I really have no more ideas. Like this exercise machine was kind of my last idea, which I was pushed back for various reasons. But now I'm going to do it. And it's going to be pushing back. <clears throat> now, I do have an appointment with uh, a place which actually uh, helps you with chronic fatigue. And I've left that till middle November because that's kind of my ace in the hole. So I'm going to go over to them and I'm going to say, hey, you know, help me out a bit. But I want to be, I want to know if my own ideas work by then. So I want to have that sort of all sorted out. And then once I go over there, I can say, well, this has been working for me and this has been working for me. And what other suggestions do you have? Now, I did go there before and it was a little bit lackluster. They were kind of, <clears throat> they were they were treating me like I was completely new and they were going to solve all my problems for me. Whereas I'm sort of like a person who has a pretty good idea. I've done my research. I've got a plan, blah, blah, blah. I just need advice I need somebody to bounce ideas off to say oh I've got this idea what do you think and they were kind of like you know they wanted to start at the ground floor which kind of annoyed me a bit 
but we'll see. Uh, the next the next thing in November may be the same. <clears throat> they may still be less of a bouncing board and more of a we're gonna we're gonna make this ten step program for you. Um, blah 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 blah, which is which might be helpful. But then again, the only thing I, I don't want to do something like weekly visits because if they're charging me like a hundred dollars a week for weekly visits and we're going through and building up the building blocks at the you know the very lowest level then i'm just like oh god i'm wasting all this money and they're not giving me any useful information so we'll see the second uh the second appointment is with the head guy a different guy so maybe it'll maybe it'll turn out a bit differently i don't know if they want me to start at the ground floor again i don't know what i'm going to do but i'm going to try and move away i'm going to say this is how I feel, blah, blah, blah. This is what I've been doing, blah, blah, blah. It's making me feel better, blah, blah, blah. Maybe get some advice at that level. We'll see how we go, though. <clears throat> but that's not for another month. So, yeah, I'm moving through. I'm not sure that this exercising and getting out and getting more fresh air is going to be a quick fix. I'm not sure that I'm going to get fixed in, like, October anymore. Um, <clears throat> but we're going to see. Um, we're going to see how much it improves. I'm still optimistic that I'm going to be cured by the end of four months. I don't, th I don't think I'm going to need the six months yet. But the fact that there is no quick fix, that I haven't found a quick fix so far, is, is slightly concerning, but not unexpected. So it would have been nice if I found a quick fix. I haven't. But the original plan, which is to take four months off and get better... Still 100% doable. Absolutely 100% doable. And once the weather gets better and I start to get out more, it might be an exponential thing. I might go from having 10 minutes walking a day to having 30 minutes walking a day outside when the weather gets better, when my fitness improves. And then maybe it'll go out to be like I can take a walk whenever I want and I don't feel tired and suddenly I'm cured. It's like, boom. It could just shoot up like that. I don't know. It's possible. It's absolutely possible. Um... And in that case, maybe I will be cured by October or November. The I, I do not know. But I'm still optimistic, absolutely optimistic. And if I don't make any real progress before November, then I'm just going to knuckle down and I'm going to say, whatever. Tell me what I need to do to get better and I'll do it. And that, that's my ace in the hole. That's my backup plan. So if I, if I don't see any plan that's actually 100% working by the time I get to that appointment, then I'll just say, what, what do you want me to do? and just follow their advice to the letter. Um, <clears throat> so either either way, I'm covering my bases. So that's the important thing. And this has been a very long video. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys tomorrow.